Hi everyone, I'm Al Rochelle, and welcome to this segment where we're going to be talking about cardiac sympathetic neuroimaging. And joining us right now is Dr. Horatio Kaufman. Dr. Kaufman, thank you for coming by. My pleasure. Appreciate your time. So let's start out right off the top by telling me a little bit about yourself and how you're involved. Well, I'm a, I'm a neurologist and I'm the director of the uh, Autonomic Disorders Division of the uh, Department of Neurology at New York University. And I'm a, a professor of neurology there with an endowed chair. And we also have a big center called the Dysautonomia Center that takes care of patients with either genetic or neurodegenerative disorders that affect the autonomic nervous system. And I've been doing that for around 40 years. Now, everybody wishes there you could come up with a definitive cause and effect, because if we did, we, we would know how to treat people a little bit better. Uh, tell me about this, the cardiac sympathetic neuroimaging. Tell me what, exactly what that is. Okay. It's a, a, a very interesting tool that can be used to understand some of the physiology and, and abnormal physiology of patients with autonomic disorders. So... Let me tell you, you see, a big difference between the motor system or the somatic system and the autonomic system mm -hmm. is that in the somatic motor system, meaning the voluntary system, the neuron that goes from the central nervous system to the target organ, to the muscle, is just one neuron. So it's one long cable that goes from the spinal cord to the muscle. Sure. So the signal is sent from the brain and it goes directly to the muscle. In the autonomic nervous system, there's a big difference. The gap between the spinal cord and the effector organ is bridged by two neurons instead of one. Okay. So the first neuron is called the preganglionic neuron mm -hmm. and has the cell body in the spinal cord and the cable, which is the axon, comes out. And then it synapses or joins with a second neuron that's in what's called an autonomic ganglia. Mm -hmm. In the case of the sympathetic ganglia, they are to the side, to both sides of the spinal cord. And from that ganglia, a second neuron comes out, which is the one that actually innervates the target organ. Now, why am I telling you this? Why is this important? Well, the reason is that in autonomic disorders, in neurodegenerative autonomic disorders and others, but we're going to focus on, on that for mm -hmm. this, the problem may be in the first neuron or in the second neuron. So the first neuron is called the preganglionic neuron, right. and that is the one I mentioned, comes from the spinal cord to the ganglia, and the second one, from the ganglia to the target organ, is the postganglionic neuron. Mm -hmm. Now, in disorders like Parkinson's disease, specifically in Parkinson's disease, is quite interesting that the problem is in the second neuron. The first one, the preganglionic, may also be affected, but what's peculiar is that the second one, the peripheral one, right. the one that goes directly to the target organ, that in itself is affected. So, in a way, Parkinson's disease, although it's a problem of the brain, mm -hmm. is really similar to a peripheral neuropathy. It affects the nerves, the cables that are outside the brain, and specifically that second neuron That's like right, in yeah. the autonomic system. Mm -hmm. Now, why, again, is this just a interesting detail uh, but with little relevance. Well, I, I believe, and a lot of people agree on that, that it's more than just a little physiologic detail because it may help you decide or, or organize better treatment. Sure, right. And wh why is that? You see, in Parkinson's disease, as I mentioned to you, that second neuron mm -hmm. is the one affected. So using, which was your original question, what is sympathetic neuroimaging, yeah. right? What you can do, you can put it, what's called a tracer that sure. is taken up by the neurons. That tracer is, is radioactive, 
with a counter outside, you can see how much of that tracer was taken by the neuron, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So again, you inject the tracer, the tracer is taken by the neuron, by a normal mechanism, it's taken in, you look at it with a camera and you see how much of that tracer was taken in. Now, to take that tracer in, the neuron has to work. Sure. If the neuron is not working, there's yeah, no tracer. No, no trace, right, right? Yeah. So, in people with Parkinson's, you give them the tracer and you see that their heart is denervated. Huh. And many, many of these patients, a high percentage of these patients, have either partial or even complete denervation, sympathetic denervation of their, of their heart, of the myocardium. Mm -hmm. Now, patients that may look like Parkinson's but have a different disease called multiple system atrophy, which right, is a MSA, big distinction, right. MSA, many of those, not all, but in general, that second neuron is spared, is normal, is the neuron number one, is the one in the spinal cord that is affected. Mm -hmm. So cardiac sympathetic neuroimaging can allow you, is another method that can help you distinguish two diseases that are very similar clinically. Sure. When you see the patient in the office, uh, they may look particularly the Parkinsonian form of multiple system atrophy, looks very similar to Parkinson's disease, how you distinguish them. There are a number of ways to distinguish them. One of them is this sympathetic neuroimaging of the heart, which is painless and okay. safe. Now, is that, is that the common practice? That's what they use then for diagnosis then? You know, unfortunately, it's not in the U.S. It's not frequently used. And the reason why it's not frequently used is just um, an insurance problem. Oh, okay. Uh, expensive. That is, well, I'm, many tests are expensive. It's just that um, many insurances will not consider a differential diagnosis between Parkinson's and multiple system atrophy a reason to pay for the test. Oh, so okay. yeah. the same test, and that's the way it's done, the same test can be used to diagnose a rare tumor called pheochromocytoma. Mm -hmm. So it's used MIBG, that's the name of the tracer, and many times using that diagnosis um, the, the patient gets the test. But Otherwise, it's not done, and that's the reason why the test is not popular in the U.S., whereas it's quite popular in Europe and in, in Japan. What, what's, is anything going to have to happen to change that? <clears throat> Excuse me, or is that likely to change now? Or is there any other tool that is as accurate as this? You know, um, one, one um, interesting or, or problem in, in neurology is the differential diagnosis between Parkinson's disease and multiple system atrophy. Right. I think this test is very useful. Mm -hmm. I, it's not 100%, uh, but it's very useful. And I, I hope people are going to use it more. We try to use it. Yeah, it's right. not the only test. There are a number of clinical features that distinguish one from the other. Mm -hmm. um, also, magnetic resonance imaging may have, of the brain may have some differences. but. Importantly, this is not the, the MIVG, the sympathetic neuroimaging yeah. should be, I think it should be used more. As it should regular, definitely regular diagnostic be tool. used more. So if, if, people, if physicians are watching this right now, what would you want them to know about uh, the sympathetic neuroimaging? Well, I would like them to know that it's a, it's a very useful test that in the, if they have uh, the possibility of explaining the insurance carrier uh, why they needed the test, I think is very useful in the, in the armamentarium to make the differential diagnosis. And, and as, far as, as far as patients, if the patient is watching this, what should they know? Should this be something that they should be asking their doctor about? I, I think they should. I, I think they should. I think the test is available and in, in many instances is for their own advantage to, to have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, deciding um, public policy in the U.S. is above my pay level. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> it's I, above all yes, of our pay yes. levels. Doctor, thank you so much for your work and keep it going. Thank you very much. 